Hi, this is Fred Greenhalgh, and this is The Dark Tome. The Dark Tome is a new dark fiction audio series featuring fantastic stories by contemporary authors wrapped in the journey of Cassie, a wayward teen who stumbles into the worlds of the story whenever she opens this strange and magical book. Our first episode features the contemporary fable The Devil on the Staircase by Joe Hill, just in time for Halloween and a chilling footnote, perhaps, to the U.S. presidential race. Enjoy a taste of The Dark Tome, Episode 1, and come back October 28th for the full meal. You know that phrase, books are a gateway to the imagination? Well, imagine it was true. Literally true. Yeah, I know. It's the oldest cliche out there. You forget that when you were young, books were like that. No matter where you were, no matter what was going on in the real world, when you opened a book, read those words, you could go to other worlds. And if you've forgotten that, if you think imagination is a toy to be locked in a box when the grown-up world comes crashing in with student loans, 30-year mortgages, and retirement accounts, then you must never have heard the legend of the Dark Tome. I mean... I never had either, not until that May, when I was spending my suspension from school reading to Mr. Gussie in the stale air of Thompson's Memorial Hospital. It was Wilson, but he spoke no longer in a whisper, and I could have fancied that I myself was speaking while he said, You have conquered, and I yield. Yet henceforward art thou also dead, dead to the world and its hopes. In me didst thou exist, and in my death See by this image which is thine own, how utterly thou hast murdered thyself. Mr. Gussie? Mr. Gussie! Uh, what, what, what is that crap? Get it out of here! Mr. Gussie, sorry, I, I was, uh... Oh, goddamn Edgar Allan Poe! Come on, Cassie, you know I hate that guy. Long-winded and overrated, if you ask me. Could you find the book I told you about? You told me to fetch you, uh... I told you to bring me the dark tome, not that crap. Give me that book. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gussie, uh, what are you doing? Uh, what say of conscience grim indeed? I told you, the book I wanted, it would have had gold letters, the spine as smooth and white as my pale... Anglo ass. It would look alive. I didn't see any book like that. Gah, what am I paying you for? You're not. I volunteered. Penance? Because you ripped the hair out of that stupid girl. Well, I did but Don't worry. She deserved it. Have you seen the nurse? Good God, are they trying to stab me in here? Nurse! Nurse! You have that clicker right there. Yeah, next you'll tell me I need get an app to get decent service around here. What did I pay into my pension for if not to get a little help when I was on my deathbed? You had a surgery, Mr. Gussie. You'll be out of here in a week. Not if they kill me first with this horrible food. Nurse! I've got to go, Mr. Gussie. Where to? You got a date? No. Uh, it's going to be something good. You think I'm going to cover for you again after what you pulled last time? What do you mean? If that nurse says I left early, Miss Pearson will flame me. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Go on. Get out of here. I got your back. Is everything okay? Tis not. You trying to kill me here? <laughs> Excuse me. This grape juice. You tried drinking it lately? It's despicable! We'd still be giving you milk if you hadn't snuck coffee brandy into the last carton. Yeah, <laughs> needs something to take the edge off, don't I? You won't even give me the good stuff. Bye, Mr. Gussie. Leaving so soon, Cassie. I'm sorry. Uh, got homework to do. Oh? I told her. She read me plenty for the day. She told me one of my favorite stories. William Wilson. <laughs> uh, of course. See you tomorrow, dear. Bye. Hey, you ever sit in one of these carts? The blankets, I swear, you make them out of sandpaper. And I should know. I worked in the number 10 mill for 30 years. You sent... But of course, I didn't have any homework to do. I'd been kicked out of school for two weeks already. But I didn't go home either. I couldn't. My mom would be with him drinking and 
things got bad when they got drinking. So that left me with Mr. Gussie's bookshop. The spare key was tucked away in the brass bell outside, next to the plexiglass poster of Stephen King's Misery. It was that poster and the strange mummified hand next to it, Mr. Gussie said it was a monkey's, that kept most of the local kids out of that place. They made up stories and dared each other to go in, swipe a book. Some said there was a time, maybe 30 years ago, when a kid went in and never came out again. I never believed stories like that. The place was filled with paperback novels, stacks of them, with bone-like creases on their spines, names like Kuntz, Matheson, Bradbury. You'd walk past those, worried Section Z for zombies would fall on your head, Whoa. to get to the antique wooden desk in the back, pull back the creaky leather chair, roll up the thrift shop rug, and lift the trap door. Go down to the basement, where the walls got wobbly. Cobwebs. Down here, no one ever bothered me. I could have my blanket and curl up with a book and be taken away. There were plenty to choose from. Hardcovers, some with a film of dust you could write your name in, ran near to the ceiling. But there was only one book that really mattered. The Dark Tome. Of course, I already knew about the book. He had told me where to find it with impeccable instructions. I had already picked it up, felt the spine that rumor said was stitched from the skins of murdered babies. I had opened it long enough to read a few words and feel how, as the words parted my lips, the book's lettering faintly glowed, and the must of the basement faded away for the smell of salt from distant seas. Mom and school and Mr. Gussie and that gossipy bitch Kathy Skillings faded into nothingness. Last time I'd opened it, I'd shut it immediately. But now... I was ready. I opened the dark tome. Okay. The Devil on the Staircase by Joe Hill. It goes, I was born in Sele Scale, the child of a common bricklayer. The, the village, village of, of my birth, birth nested, nested in the highest sharpest ridges, high above Positano, and in the cold spring, the clouds crawled along the streets like a procession of ghosts. It was 820 steps from Sulescale to the world below. I know. I walk them again and again with my father, following his tread from our home in the sky and then back again. After his death, I walked them often enough alone. It, it worked! It worked! Holy crap, it worked! There it is. The little village. Uh, what did they call it? Uh, Posse... Posse, uh... Positano. Ah! <laughs> no need to be frightened, little girl. Who, who are you? A boy who used to live in this village. Ah, oh, well, I suppose I'm not a boy anymore. Look at it. The olive orchard, the ocean, the stairs. I knew each step of those stairs very well. What happens now? Will you continue reading, or...? I don't know. It is up to you. I have all the time in the world. Uh, okay, well, the next bit, it goes... Up and down I walked those stairs carrying freight. Yes, up and down I walked those stairs carrying freight, until with each step it seemed as if the bones in my knees were being ground up into sharp white splinters. Are you coming with me? What? <laughs> okay. The cliffs were mazed with crooked staircases, made from brick in some places, granite in others. Marble here, limestone there, clay tiles and beams of lumber. When there were stairs to build, my father built them. When the steps were washed out by spring rains, it fell to him to repair them. For years, he had a donkey to carry his stone. After it fell dead, he had me.